Look what we are going to be working on today. It's a variable transformer, also known as a variac, that allows you to control the level of alternating current that you're sending to a device. Hi everyone and welcome back to the workshop. If this is your first time joining us, I'm Thomas. Thank you so much for being here. This particular unit was made in the Soviet Union in 1988. I picked it up at the Eliava market here in Tbilisi for about $20. It's the perfect size for my workbench, but it does need a little bit of love, a little bit of repair and a few modifications. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Let's get started. Okay, guys, this is what we're working with today. Pretty standard form factor for a Variac. Here we've got four posts. These are the inputs. Over here we've got two for output. Uh, this is the main controller knob, but if you'll notice, it's not sitting properly with the case. And I don't know if that's because it is bent or the case is not situated properly, but it's actually scraping the edge over here. So that needs some attention. We need, we need to work with that. Okay, this is not easy to read at all, but five to 220 volts made in 1988, and it's rated for two amps, which is just perfect for the workbench because I really don't need more than two amps. Here's the underside, and what I'm seeing here immediately is that this foot of the case is not attached properly. And maybe this one also looks like it's not doing very well. All these others appear okay. So that may be part of the mystery of why this case is not situated properly. It's got a chair of bumps and scrapes, but you know what? I like that. It tells me this thing has got history. That for me is part of the charm. So in addition to the repair that we're going to be doing here, there are also a few modifications that I'd like to do to optimize this for the workbench. First of all, this needs a power cable and a power switch. Because if you have to plug in something at your workbench every time you want to use it, it really breaks your flow. And tools should exist to support your flow, not break your flow. And if we're going to have a power switch, we should probably also have a power indicator light. The other thing that I would like to do here is that I noticed there were no safety mechanisms in the, on this device. There is a ground screw right here, but that's it. So I would like to find a way to add at least a fuse somewhere that will make this thing a little more safe. The tricky part here is that I don't want to change the form factor of this. I like that it's small and I want whatever we do to look elegant. I want it to, to look, look as good as this device does. So, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. The first order of business is to see if we can address this misaligned uh, voltage knob here. And we'll go from there. Wow, guys, check this out. This is barely hanging on by a few strands of wire. Okay, there's something about this that I don't like. So this locking washer, I'm not sure what the name, is not flat. And so as this thing spins, it's pushing up parts of this more than it should be. Still not flat. Okay, so the problem is that this is causing some unevenness as the knob turns. So I am gonna try to replace it with this with maybe a washer under it. I only, I just dug this out of my kit. I don't have a whole set of these or anything. So hopefully this will work. What was happening is the shaft inside, the whole shaft was spinning before, whereas it should be, the knob should be moving on top of the shaft. And I put a nylon lock washer on the bottom so hopefully that'll solve it. Even this nut looks like it was, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's not centered, it's rounded off. So these are worthless to us. Let's see if that makes a difference. There's still a little bit of dragging, but it's way better than it was. I think where the bottom of the knob is maybe scraping against this, but it, it turns freely now and uh, I'm happy with this. So we're gonna move on to something else. Okay, what's next is switches. Let's see, that's way too big, I can see right now. We need something very low profile. 
Okay, something like this. This is great. Three amps, that's plenty. Or this, which is a Soviet equivalent. So this would be period correct. This is rated for five amps, if I'm not mistaken. So one of these should work. I always think you can't put just any LED in here because I, want it, I don't want to have to convert any voltage down for the light source. So this is a neon indicator light that runs off of 220. And so if there's space for this, and that's a big if looking at this thing, I think this will be a good solution. All I have to work with is the space between the chassis and the coils of the transformer. So that looks like about, I don't know, maybe two centimeters. And then there's a little more space here, but that's also where we have wiring and all that kinds of stuff. I'm thinking switch right here. And maybe we can get away with an indicator light up here. Fuse, I'm not sure yet, to be honest. I don't know where we're gonna put a fuse. There's no space. There's just not enough space for this stuff. I think we can actually test the switch through one of these existing holes. Right, that's not gonna be the position. I want it to be over here. Uh, this will at least test the fitment. Make sure it's not contacting things it's not supposed to be contacting. Well, it's really close. It's really tight. Okay, guys, I'm going to put the switch on hold for a minute. So these are the posts that are in the front. These two are for the power going into the variac. These two for the power coming out. So if I use these posts, that means that I have to have cables coming off the front of the variac that attach to this, it's kind of ugly. And then on the other side, I've got to have other leads coming off that I plug things into, and that just doesn't seem very elegant. So I was thinking about it, and I, I remember a long time ago, I pulled this plug out of a uh, dying UPS power supply, and I'm wondering if there's a way that we can mount this here. I don't know how yet, I don't know if that's possible. Wouldn't that just look so much better? So I'm gonna see if we can make this work. Okay, so we've got this hole filed, all is well. I basically need to cut out the same radius circle so that this fits better here. So I started to do all this crazy math, and then I realized that maybe I could just put a piece of sandpaper here and uh, sand it like that. Okay. Fitment is not perfect, but it's close. So I'm thinking that we're gonna go with that. Let's see what we got going here. And there it is. Feels solid. Oh, I put it in wrong. I put it in upside down. Uh, okay, turn this upside down. Here we go. Okay, the concept here is this. I mean, it's not perfect fit, but given that I'm working with a 50-year-old light switch and a piece I stole from a salvage UPS power supply, um, I'll take what I can get. What's next is our main power cord. So I have this three-wire cord, which I think is very important because I want the chassis here to be grounded. It's got a British plug on it which unfortunately we can't use. Why is that unfortunate? Because British plugs, UK plugs, have a fuse inside them, which I think is really smart, actually. I wish more plugs did. So even though I would love to use this, um, I think we're gonna cut this off and put our own plug on it, which I have sitting around here somewhere. The concept here is that this is gonna go in the back through one of these holes here, like this. I'm going to put a, hopefully, a strain relief of some sort. Then it is going to snake around the base of the transformer inside until it gets to our 
So it gets to our sort of power cluster at the front. I was a little bit reticent to do this because it's putting a, you know, it's putting this main line right next to all this current, but there's so much insulation here, I don't think it's a problem. I could run it underneath like this, but I don't want to have dangly wires underneath this thing, especially since it, right now I don't have a plan to mount this on a board or anything. So for now we're going to do it nice and neat on the inside here. And um, I think it's gonna come out looking really well. Okay guys, I have spent the last hour filing a hole for this strain relief for the cable. It's finally done. This is the back of the Variac. And uh, it's fine, whatever, it's a strain relief. It's not, the, it's not the end of the world. But somehow in the process of taking this thing on and off, I noticed one of the wrappings of the Variac is detached from whatever it's supposed to be attached to. And uh, I have to be honest, I have no idea what this is supposed to go to. I'm really hoping I didn't just break this thing. I mean, it's got to connect to somewhere, surely. Uh, though I see on the other side, there's a wrapping that doesn't seem to connect. I don't know. I'm just gonna move ahead with the wiring and hope this isn't a fatal problem. Okay guys, before I get any further, uh, because we have this like mystery wire that came undone or something, I don't know exactly what's going on, I wanna test this thing. So I've got the female plug receptacle hooked up, but um, let's just put a meter on it, plug it in, see what we get. Or maybe there's sparks or smoke or, or power goes down. I don't know exactly. Okay guys, here we go. Well, I have 223 volts and no response whatsoever from the Variac. Oh man, that's frustrating. What is going on? I think I finally solved the wiring mystery here. The disconnected wire we found is the beginning of the transformer's coil wrap. And this should be hooked up to the neutral leg coming in from the mains. The other end of the coil is hooked up to the hot leg. This is what energizes the transformer. The wiring for our output will be that same neutral leg and then the line coming off the Variax wiper. So we're gonna wire everything up as you see it here and hopefully that solves our problem. Okay guys, uh, this looks like a complete mess, I understand. But basically this is all of the wiring except for the fuse in place. In place means what? Connected. So we're gonna run a little test. If the, so I'm gonna plug it in. And once I hit that switch, it's plugged in now. So once I hit this switch, this red light should come on and we should start getting voltage that we can adjust from the variant. So here we go, zero volts. And red light is on. And there's our voltage coming up. And it tops out at 247 volts. That's awesome. So it's working, it's working, this thing is working. Now we just need to put it all together, find a home for this red light and see if we can sneak in a fuse holder and then try to make it look pretty somehow. And uh, <laughs> then hopefully we'll be all done. Here we go guys, got it all buttoned up here and I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough before we test it. This was the only place I could find for the red light. I think it came out okay. I tucked our fuse down in here. It's pretty unobtrusive, so that's kind of nice. Uh, here's the feet we just put on, our switch of course. And here we have our ground, which goes all the way through to the ground on this port from the mains 
through this chassis and into whatever device we have plugged into here. Okay, everyone, time for the big test. Here we go. Red light, that's good. And yes, look at that. Fantastic. I love it. So there you have it, guys. Soviet made Variac from 1988. We did some repair, we did a few modifications. I'm super happy with this. I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of this on future projects. Thank you so much for coming along and I'll see you on the next video.